like gender as like the um, the construct or gender as like the uh, political discourse? Well, obviously, I guess the first instance is, is like general sex education in school. Um, I don't think we ever had like a proper conversation about like this gender is like this and like they weren't really um, pushing like social constructs like on us when I was growing up. Um, so we never really talked about it until I came out. I think the first time I really started thinking about gender in general as a subject, um, I was seven years old and I watched the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I grew up in very immigrant um, affluent neighborhoods. So I think we kind of all had the same understandings as what girls and boys were supposed to do. I'd say my parents taught me the traditional way of gender. So a man is a man, a woman is a woman, and patriarchy is real. Um, in terms of like gender, more of like um, as a spectrum, understanding that uh, gender is not just, perhaps not just male or female, that would be kind of discovered that myself um, online, on Tumblr? Mm. Gen oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> actually, mm, actually, when I was little, I don't even wear of a gender. I always thought that because I knew my sexuality first, then it's the gender. But now I'm still searching for my uh, self-identity, I mean, pronoun, all kinds of things, yeah. En Haiti, il y a comme une une éducation très euh, silencieuse et tabou autour de la sexualité. Donc, les différents genres n'étaient jamais euh, abordés. Donc, c'était vraiment très accepté dans ma famille. C'était juste, on n'en parlait jamais. Donc, du coup, j'ai appris ce que c'était puis ce que ça signifiait vraiment quand je suis arrivée au Québec. OK, so I grew up in a really, really small town in a very conservative area in the U.S. So, I think my first time hearing about just gender as a concept besides just basically the same thing as like your sex biologically it was almost like kind of scary but i think once i sort of moved away from home at like 15 and then finally came to montreal where things are a lot bigger there's a lot more people from different backgrounds um where i started not only realizing how great it is to meet people and learn about their different experiences with gender but I also started realizing my unique experiences and the way that I feel about myself and the way that I interact with my gender and my expression. Mm. Je pense que sincèrement les moments qui m'ont marqué en, en réfléchissant sur mon genre c'est principalement ceux de se dire que ah mais en fait je suis la seule femme dans cet espace. Oh je suis dans un espace de travail où euh, il y, y a le regard masculin qui va te dire euh, euh, ah mais tu prends trop de place euh, ah mais et je suis quelqu'un d'assez ferme et du coup il y a une espèce de cette gêne avec euh, dans un dans un espace de travail qui est majoritairement masculin cette gêne à voir une femme qui prend les décisions ou qui euh, euh, ou qui dit les choses telles qu'elle les pense et du coup je pense que je me suis rendu compte des fois dans des espaces que j'occupais des espaces importants mais j'étais là mais je suis toute seule est-ce que j'ai envie de passer par fin Et c'est dans ces moments-là où je me dis, mais c'est fou de ne pas avoir un espace où je peux parler à quelqu'un qui peut-être comprend, vit les mêmes réalités. C'est chiant. C'est chiant et tu as toujours ton responsable hiérarchique qui va être un, un homme cis, hétéro, qui est éduqué sur rien du tout. Euh, ouais, ça, dans le cas du travail, c'est vraiment... Des fois, c'est lourd. Ouais. Je dirais que quand tu es dans un, euh, un environnement de travail majoritairement masculin, hétéro normé, Ouais, parce que c'est des quand tu es dans des petites bulles euh, le travail euh, l'école c'est des statistiquement c'est des, des petites bulles de société donc ça va copier la, la diversité dans ta classe ou dans ton travail ce sera ça, statistiquement ça va éventuellement ressembler à la statistique euh, aux statistiques de diversité euh, dans le monde entier tu vois ce que je veux dire donc euh, je pense des fois que Éventuellement au travail, quand tu es exposé à des environnements toxiques euh, où le mansplaining est roi, tu fais semblant pendant toute la journée euh, que 
Il faut que tu acceptes qu'on t'explique ton travail. Et aussi dans le milieu de travail, hein, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de discriminations. Moi, j'ai travaillé à l'hôpital, et dans l'hôpital, c'est très discriminatoire, et avec les, surtout avec les filles. C'est toujours plus les filles que les garçons. On dirait qu'il y a un, comme, comme une barrière qui n'est pas été acceptée plus que quelque chose que vous faites, que si vous tenez avec une amie ou un collègue de travail plus longtemps, hein, c'est pas ce qu'elle est allée à faire. Si, c'est toujours comme ça. Mais, mais dans le travail, il y avait, avait des personnes différentes, mais c'était travailler comme, tant, comme nous, fait que à moi, ça ne me fait rien. Mais est-ce qu'il y avait des discussions des fois? Que oui, vous... oui, non, il y avait des discussions parce qu'il y a des personnes qui étaient très méchantes. La façon de parler, parce non importe différents. quel conflit il y avait, Or, les noms qu'il les donnait, les, 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 la façon qu'il les traitait, ce n'était pas très sympathique. Des fois, je voyais beaucoup de monde qui pleurait à cause de ça. Ouais. Et les chefs acceptaient aussi, parce que si, sinon, ça avait coupé ça. Ce qui me définit le plus, je pense que quand j'ai grandi, peut-être ce qui me définit a changé un peu, dépendant de où j'étais dans ma vie quand j'étais enfant. La culture. On, in or, a specific order, when I was a kid, culture, then gender, then generational identity. That, that as, you get, as I got older, I realized now maybe my generational identity defines me more than my culture and my gender. Because you grow into your own person and then you start identifying what you like, what you don't like, and you have to understand the times you live in. It's, it's impossible to grow and not understand the times you live in. You, like, the generation that I'm a part of, that we're a part of, is the first generation living through what we went through, where what our parents, the manual that our parents had on life is completely expired. And so we can't even, we can't even follow our parents' manual on life. We can't even follow their advice to a certain extent, the way they could follow their own parents, because things were still very similar. So we actually, we're, we're, we're learning on the fly. Ever since we were born, we've been learning on the fly. We're the, we're the era where everything has always been a transition. We've never known the same thing for more than five years. I'd say at this moment, it'd be cultural identity in the sense of I am proud of being an Asian woman versus in the past, um, I wasn't. And um, I can learn to love my face and my different features that are not Caucasian. So yeah, so right now, like that's what matters to me most. Qu'est-ce qui me définit davantage Est-ce que c'est mon genre Est-ce que c'est ma culture Ou est-ce que c'est mon âge Sincèrement, je dirais que... Après, ça, c'est ma posture en tant qu'afro-féministe. Euh, ma posture est entièrement, totalement intersectionnelle. Euh, je ne suis pas juste femme. Je suis une femme noire. Et je... pour moi, je ne peux pas enlever mon identité de personne noire. Quand on me voit dans la rue, euh, on m'identifie immédiatement, donc socialement. Generational identity, yeah. Yeah, I would go with that one. For sure. Do I have to explain why? <laughs> uh, I would go with that one uh, just because I feel like we're like in, in it together. I feel like a big uh, community, um, like family almost, like chosen, like there's a lot of chosen family, like we hear that word a lot, especially in the queer community, but I feel like um, it's more present and it's just, it makes like the difference. Um. Um, a lot. I think in China or Eastern Asian culture is always very stereotypical. So it's very heterosexual. There's patriarchy. So if you are a woman, you cook, you take care of the family, you have all the like childbearing responsibilities, and then the man is the breadwinner. Um, and actually, you know, both our families, it's like the structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but culture definitely. Like I still remember when I was young, when I was really little, women and men actually eat in different tables. And I, when I grew up, I realized, okay, they're actually, you know, differentiating. And it's always women who are busy at the kitchen, and men, they just, you know, play cards, smoke, and, you know, discuss whatever. But women are always the workers of the family, and they, they take so much responsibility that I feel it's really unjust. Um, yeah, but culture definitely had a huge influence, but I think we're like rebels mm -hmm. at some, uh, some, <coughs> some level. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, and I think our generation is slowly changing the culture also. It, it has in terms of whether or not women get to enjoy um, 
themselves. So I didn't see happy women growing up and I kind of figured, okay, that's just the way it is. You are sacrificial, sacrificial. Okay, you have to be sacrificial. You have to find joy through other people's joy. Mais donc c'est ça, donc ça, le fait que ben, moi je me souviens quand j'étais plus jeune, j'ai entendu ma grand-mère raconter des histoires de, par exemple, de, je sais pas, dans une école il y avait une, une enfant qui savait qu que l'enfant était lesbienne, je sais pas pourquoi, et qu'en fait, euh, le conseil de ma mamie, c'était comme de ne pas me laisser approcher de la personne. Tu vois ce que je veux dire? Donc, il y a quand même des choses comme ça qui te marquent. Moi, j'étais enfant quand elle a dit ça et je m'en souviens aujourd'hui. Et, et ça fait partie de tout ce qui va... Ça fait... C'est un commentaire, hein? Mais tous ces petits trucs-là qui se passent dans ta famille, ça fait partie de tout ce qui va construire euh, les tabous en toi-même. All of my family is very Catholic. Um, my dad's side is Acadian and my mom's side is Lebanese. And so there was definitely a huge religious aspect that played a role in how I saw gender growing up. And so it definitely instilled in my head that there's a binary there that, you know, you're male or you're female and you don't stray away from that. Oof. Uh... Coming from a very traditional, like Chinese background, parents are homophobic, traditional. So, kind of going back to before, I'd say it's given me an example of what not to think and of what not to be. I don't know. I think it's just showed me that I should be better than that, and that you know, like why be close-minded and hurt people? You know, it literally costs you nothing to just accept people as who they are and you know be open-minded. So. Um, when I was young, let's say my education, the fact that we never mentioned it, it never played a role in me having barriers to be open-minded about subjects around gender. However, in my culture, it's not only silenced, it's violently silenced. All LGBTQ2 plus community, for me um, and Haiti have been ostracized for years. And it's not only, as I said, silence, but violently silence where there were hate crimes and there are still a lot of hate crimes. So my culture, I don't think, helped me become that person that I am today, very open-minded and very caring towards a community that has been going through so much and is still going through so much. Being involved in the community mostly being involved in online communities, especially that advocated for things like this, that were open-minded, that taught me how to be open-minded. D'avoir rencontré des personnes euh, euh, qui exprimaient leur identité de genre de façon non conventionnelle, euh, dite non conventionnelle, pardon. Et en fait, euh, c'est ça, c'est d'avoir rencontré des gens et j'étais là, oh mon Dieu, mais cette personne euh, est tout aussi valide que moi. Euh, en fait, euh, Je ne connaissais juste pas sa réalité et en la connaissant, je suis oh mon dieu, euh, tu sais, j'avais une conception trop figée de la vie, je ne savais pas, je ne comprenais pas. Puis en fait, je pense que ça a juste changé en rencontrant des gens exceptionnels. You can try out a lot of different identities, you can change your pronouns, you can identify one way one day and then change it up the next day, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, a lot of people will hear, like, from, you know, a lot of criticizes, I guess, that you might be just having a stage. But I guess something that they don't consider is that, like, even if it is a stage, that doesn't make it, that doesn't make it not important. It doesn't mean I'm not identifying that way. It doesn't mean it's not who I am, because who I am is who I feel like I am. And there's nothing more to it. I probably would have relaxed on the gay jokes when I was a kid. I didn't, it's not like I was, I mean, we're all kids and we're all, you know, influenced by more or less a lot of the same things. So obviously if I know now when I was a kid, maybe not have used a certain, maybe use a certain insult on a certain person because maybe they were actually living through something. If I could go back, I would try not to 
have that phase where I wanted to be a white Caucasian girl, um, stemming from, you know, insecurities. Um, I went to schools where I was like the literally the only Asian person and everyone would be like, why are your eyes so small? And they like do like the eye pulling thing. Why is your nose so small? Why is your face so flat? Blah, blah, blah. And just like, you know, I'd, I'd wish I had like the mentality back then of being like, you know what, you suck and like shut the hell up, you know, because like out of like this entire situation, you look like an idiot, not me, you know. I would say just like learning to be like confident in who I am would have made like, um, well, makes a difference in just expressing myself and um, don't really like compare myself to others. So I think that really young me before a lot of sort of biases were sort of implanted in me from the environment I was in, I think a really young me would think that I'm super cool because I just, I feel like I do what I want. I can embrace a lot of different parts of me and not see it as conflicting. I can have a lot of different identities, a lot of different aspects to my expression. And I think that young me, I just wanted to be artistic. I wanted to experiment with my clothes. I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to sort of build myself up the way I wanted without having anyone else sort of looking in on it and judging. Uh, if in the back, I think I will be more tough. I actually just learned how to swim uh, this uh, summer because I have very traumatized experience when I was little. Someone asked me to leave because I'm a because they think that I am a uh, a boy, and to they want me to prove that you are a girl. You know, it's very uh, shame shame on you. <laughs> but if I back to uh, back to before, I was like, yeah, I'm a. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's, it's hard, more, uh, very more, more tough, tough yeah. and more uh, ins, ins, uh, you insist, insist more, more, you insist more for, yeah, um, insist of attention. myself, I am a girl, like, uh, I don't care that's what you, that's yeah. who I am, so, yeah. I'll be very honest with you, I don't, I don't feel, at least right now, that I'm at the level where I can even conceptualize educating people. Because there's still a lot of information that I don't have. I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready to have, to be exposed to certain realities, certain information at the speed that it may come. I'm trying to take everything in stride and add it gradually, add it to my bank of knowledge, whatever, and then I adjust accordingly. But I'm gonna continue learning as I go and I'm gonna just try not to get in people's way. Yeah when I speak make sure at least when I speak it has value in it and make sure when I listen that I actually listen to to assess and understand. Je pense que ça va vraiment être euh... tu mettons si j'ai des enfants, je pense que ça va vraiment être être là dans le fond. Je pense que chacun quand il y a des enfants ou quoi que ce soit, partage un peu sa culture, tu sais. Comme mettons si tu as des parents fermés, ben puis tes parents ils t'ouvrent jamais sur ça, ben C'est sûr que quand tu te vois petit, euh, tu vas tu vas être resté fermé puis tu vas croire qu'est-ce que tes parents te disent. Mais je pense que moi en tant que rôle de, de femme si j'ai un jour j'ai des enfants, ben c'est vraiment d'éduquer mes enfants puis d'utiliser les bons mots, les bons termes, puis aussi utiliser euh, ben avoir une vision plus ouverte, c'est que tout le monde est différent. Mais je pense que c'est pas mal ça. Je... Ouais. Je pense aussi que à travers tous les films que je fais, il euh, y a cette intention de placer certaines personnes à certains moments, à certains endroits, en face de certaines personnes, dans certaines discussions, où il y a une déconstruction de tout ce qu'on a appris autour de la sexualité, autour de notre identité, de pourquoi on l'a construit comme ça, puis comment on peut aller vers une certaine évolution, tout en prenant un peu de, chacune de, ces, de chacun de ces apprentissages. Donc, Je réponds de manière concise à travers mes films et à travers mon projet de vie. Voilà. Sometimes when I try to have these conversations with my my mother or my father, I don't want to upset them, but I don't want them to upset another person either. So I try as much as I can to break little stereotypes little by little 
even if I met with like years and years of resistance, then I just don't want someone to feel like they're not loved. For sure, it, it like uh, puts a weight on your shoulders uh, that other members of like my family don't have or like didn't have that I know of. But yeah, just have to remind yourself that it's for a reason and that you're doing it for all the generations to come. All I can do with someone else to try and show them my identity, my culture, is be authentic. There's still a long way to go. There's still a lot of people who aren't accepting of other people for kind of no reason, but it's a slow change and it's one that no person, no matter how, I don't know, civic-minded you are, no matter how much you want to change the world, no one person is going to be able to do that. It's just little conversations, it's helping people understand, it's being really patient, like we said, and I guess that's all we can do for now.